The S&P 500 and Dow Jones close at a record high as the U.S. market rallies ahead of the Fed meet and mega cap tech earnings. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific trade mixed as the Chinese property crisis weighs. The gift nifty, however, is indicating a gap up start for the Indian market. Crude prices dipped despite rising tensions in West Asia as investors brace for lower demand following a debt crisis in the Chinese property sector. Brent now trades around $82 a barrel. An ITC delivers a soft third quarter. Cigarette volumes remain muted even as profit beats estimates. Bajaj finances third quarter numbers beat estimates. AUM growth comes in at nearly 35% year over year, while profit grows around 20%. And in key earnings to track today, a strong quarter is seen from LNT with lower input costs expected to support margins. Commentary on US sales and regulatory concerns will also be key to track as Dr. Reddy is also reports third quarter numbers today. Good morning and welcome to Power Breakfast. Those are the top headlines. I'm Pavitra. There is a lot to talk about today, but once again, the handover from the global markets has been quite positive. You have Asia, which is a little bit mixed today, but you know, the US markets did very well in the trading session yesterday. So for Asia right now, it's looking pretty mixed. So you have Nikkei, which is leading the gains. It's doing quite well right now. Kospi also managed. And so the Nikkei market is up over 100 points, 110 points over there. Uh, Taiwan, like you can see on your screen, is just about managing to hold in the green. And Kospi is the other market, which is seeing a little bit of green this morning. What's not doing so well for the uh, Asian screen is the Shanghai market. So that's down around 20 points. And then you have the Hong Kong market also on your screen. That's taken quite a big knock right at the start. So that's down around 1.7% this morning. But you know, the implied open for our own market after that solid session yesterday is once again, very, very strong. 114 points higher right now on the gift nifty. So looks like we'll definitely get another positive start. But let's see if the momentum holds or not for the rest of the trading session. That's what's happening across Asia. But let's also talk about the US markets now. Because like I was mentioning, you know, uh, the US markets ended Monday's trading session much higher. The Dow Jones gained over 200 points, 220 points. The S&P 500 closed at a fresh record high as well. And the tech heavy Nasdaq composite index saw a surge of over 1% at the end of the trading session. We have CNBC's Pippa Stevens who's here to bring us a wrap of all of the action that played out on Wall Street. U.S. markets were up across the major indexes to end Monday's trading session. As investors brace for a fresh round of mega cap tech companies to report earnings this week and the Fed's Wednesday decision on interest rates. The Dow closed up 224 points. The S&P 500, which finished at an all-time high, added 37 points. And the tech-heavy Nasdaq, rising 173. Tax season is officially upon us. Today is the first day for U.S. taxpayers to file their 2023 returns. A majority of taxpayers feel they pay too much, with many saying they're getting a poor value in return. In a new poll from the Associated Press and University of Chicago, about two-thirds of taxpayers say they spend too much on federal income taxes. About 70 percent say the same about local property taxes, while roughly six in ten feel that way about state sales tax. And Amazon and vacuum maker iRobot say they mutually agree to call off their planned acquisition. The Roomba maker also announced its chair and CEO would step down and the company would lay off about 350 people. The billion-dollar deal appeared doomed after reports came out claiming the European Union would not give it regulatory approval. That's what's happening here in the U.S. Back to you in Mumbai. All right, Pippa, thanks a lot for getting us all of those, uh, you know, all of that action from the U.S. markets. But sticking with the U.S., investors in global markets will closely track the Federal Reserve's decision, which is due tomorrow. The U.S. Fed is largely expected to maintain key interest rates at current levels. But, uh, you know, any kind of commentary that we can get on when the Fed could actually start cutting rates is what will be most closely watched. So we have Steve Leesman to really set the stage for tomorrow's big Fed decision. Steve. One way to think about the Fed is this. They've done their final maneuvers on the balance beam. It's now in midair to execute the landing, and no one quite knows if they're going to stick it. Judged by the inflation numbers so far, the past few months anyway, the routine has gone pretty well. All three major gauges, PCE, Headline, Core, and even Core Services X Housing, are at or below 2%. The six-month annualized core rate has been below the Fed's 2% target for two months running now. And all of that has come, surprisingly, with growth above potential and the unemployment rate barely budging. So 
Why not cut rates right now? Well, staying the Fed's hand, judged by what they've been saying uh, from that immediate cut, is concerned about the sustainability of the decline in inflation, growth and employment still remaining strong, with particular concern about uh, wage growth and risk from, of course, the Middle East conflict, which could lead to a new inflation surge. Hasn't so far. The Fed, most of all, doesn't think it's what it, it'll help the credibility or the economy by cutting rates and having to reverse course and hike again. So it wants to be very sure. Markets have now given the Fed some flexibility. There's just a 2% chance of a rate cut at this meeting, 49% for March. That is down from a near certainty of around 80% at the last meeting. You can see that certainly rises to all the way to 99% by June for that cut. Now, the Fed's path to its landing is full of uncertainty. Strong growth could give it time to execute the soft landing, but rate cuts need to be need to work into the economy. And you still have those past effects of rate hikes still dragging on growth. And you can do a routine, a great routine, as you know, but if you blow the landing tie, you could end up off the podium. All right, Steve, thanks a lot for taking us through that, uh, you know, entire set of uh, cues as well as the setup before we get into that big Fed decision. But speaking of that, we also spoke with the former Fed Vice Chair Roger Ferguson. So listen in to what he had to say as well. In my world, it's still the second half of the year. Uh, and for me, that's not a new view. Um, I think what, is, what we've seen is an economy that is still strong. The last GDP print, I think, surprised a little bit. The good news is the last PCE print suggested that the disinflation process is underway. Um, but there are some concerns that a few people might have. Um, some of the turmoil in the Mideast might lead to uh, uh, pick up slightly in goods inflation. And the service sector still is a little hot. So I think second half of the year still is my bet at this stage. You know, and I think the market is starting to come at least in that direction. All right, second half of the year is where Roger Ferguson sees some rate cuts coming through. But, you know, let's also talk about the Treasury yields because that has been a big talking point for the U.S. markets across, uh, you know, all of 2023. We actually saw the 10-year leaping as high as 4.1%. So where are we, uh, U.S. Treasury yields really headed? Let's listen into what Richard Sharma of Rockefeller International has to say on the big move that we've seen here. We are finding a new equilibrium because, you know, given where inflation is headed now, um, in terms of, you know, back to 2% for now, I'd say that, uh, uh, you know, people are getting very excited about how much more yields can fall from here. And my point is, I'm just not sure that yields can fall that much more, uh, that the sensitivity has changed. Uh, so a much higher term premium is what I expect. All right, that is the word coming in on the move that we could see on U.S. Treasury yields. But another big development from the U.S. is the drone attacks in Jordan by Iran-backed militants that killed three U.S. troops and wounded a dozen others. Following the unprecedented attack, U.S. President Joe Biden promised to retaliate against the militants. The U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin also vowed that the U.S. would take all necessary action to really defend their troops. Let's listen in to a piece of that. Let me start with my outrage and sorrow for the death of three brave U.S. troops in Jordan and for the other troops who were wounded. The President and I will not tolerate attack on U.S. forces, and we will take all necessary actions to defend the U.S. and our troops. All right, that is an important update coming through. We'll keep bringing you more updates on that through the day as well. But for now, let's talk about how all of the global cues that we have on hand really impact our own markets as well as the individual stocks that we should watch in, t in uh, today's trading session. So our research team is here. Vivek, Hormaz, Nigel, all join me now. Uh, guys, a very good morning to all of you. Vivek, let me come to you first. We were just going through the global setup and largely, once again, looks very supportive for our own markets. Well, absolutely right. So, you know, going into all of these big events, the markets has clearly decided to stay positive. And, you know, most of the markets are actually near record highs. Uh, like you mentioned, U.S. markets ended uh, on a record close yesterday, Nasdaq doing the bulk of the heavy lifting up over a percent. Now, yesterday what actually happened was that oil prices also cooled off from two-month highs. So, Brent futures, you know, yesterday were low by a little over a percent and now trading closer to the $82.4 a barrel mark. But let's talk about the Indian markets. Indian markets clearly led by superstar Reliance Industries. Yesterday, the biggest Nifty heavyweight, you know, making the bulk of the up move and along with that tracking the Nifty higher. What actually moved higher yesterday? It was the 
entire oil and gas pack uh, stronger refining margins across the sector aiding the rally over there yesterday along with that the entire PSU stocks as well utilities uh, name it as utilities oil and gas even banks all of the PSU stocks went higher yesterday and the infra pack also moved ahead uh, you know just before the budget so it'll be interesting to see whether this particular up move can be sustained even in today's trading session but a lot of key events today so number one you know we'll have to look at the earnings so big earnings uh, capital goods major lnt will declare its results today dr ready srf mnm fin some of the other stocks in the fnl segment that will you know go ahead and report their results today primary market activity too quite strong remember bls e services ipo you know opens today and we have one listing so epac europe list today remember the issue was oversubscribed over 16 times it will be interesting to see the kind of debut that, that particular company makes on the exchanges all right, uh, Vivek, thanks a lot for setting us up for the trading session. Let's also get Ormaz in. He's looking at all of the stocks that we should track. Ormaz, once again, of course, a lot of big earnings coming through after market close. Plenty of reactions that we'll have to watch out for today and start off with ITC and we'll talk about all of these in greater detail as the show goes by but the core point for ITC is that the cigarette volumes growth ranged between 0% to minus 2% as compared to the street estimates that were 0% to a 2% growth so we'll keep an eye out on that. Bajaj Finance the numbers were a beat on estimates but the asset quality saw a slight deterioration on a sequential basis so we'll keep an eye out on that as well. Vodafone Idea is the one to watch out for because the net loss although it narrowed sequentially but it was a loss of over 6,500 crores nonetheless. The net debt payable by the 31st of December as per what the company said is close to 5,400 crore rupees and yet there is no clarity on the promoter infusion of 2,000 crore rupees that was promised to be completed in the December quarter last year and is still not being completed yet. Piramal Enterprises reported a net loss but that was because of the AIF provisions that they had to make that are informed about this earlier as well but the asset quality saw improvement on a sequential basis. Some more earnings reactions today will be NTPC, Marico, Venus Pi Mahindra Logistics, Petronet LNG saw some good numbers, so we'll react to that as well. Karsana Di Diagnostics has won an order from the government of Maharashtra where they'll be providing MRI and CT scan services in hospitals across 17 districts of the state which are under the authority. KEC International has won orders worth 1300 crore rupees. Nugen Software has also won an order for 97 crore rupees. And Orchid Pharma has won approval from the European Medicinal Agency for a drug used in the treatment of a urinary tract infection. Back to you. Okay, Hormas, thanks a lot for taking us through all of those stocks. We're going to watch for all of these in today's trading session. Finally, it's over to Nigel, who's looking at cues from the futures and options space. Hi, Nigel. Hi, morning, Pavitra. You know, a very, very good trading session is what we had yesterday. And the flows, if you're looking at it, well, you say there was no big buying. But the FIs didn't sell. I think the bulls took it in their stride. And the other factor that played out, there was clearly a short covering bounce that played out on the Nifty Bank itself. And that's the one that had come in for a harder knock. So if you pull up, uh, you know, the chart out there, yes, you'll see that on the Nifty, there was some mild open interest build up. But on the Nifty Bank, clearly, the index went flying up and you had open interest lower, telling you there was short covering that played out. What about the FIs? What did they do? Well, that data point as well perfectly tallies in with this short covering. Because yesterday, there was a swing of closure on 10,000 contracts. Why do I say that? Shots got covered out by around 5,000 contracts. And long addition was 5,000 contracts. So the swing factor out there is closure on 10,000 contracts. And yet, they continue to remain net short with closure around 100,000 contracts on the short side. But at the start of the trade, it was around 109,000 odds. So there was some short covering that played out, though they continue to re remain heavily on the net short side. In an uptrending market, you want to see some put writing. And that's precisely what we saw. 21,500, 21,600, 21,700 put. All of them did see a fair bit of open interest build up, which took the PCR to around 1.2 from closer to around 1 in the previous trading session. So let's get to the levels then. The good news yesterday was the Nifty went ahead and we conquered the 20 DMA. So that becomes the near term uh, you know, support level. The crucial support will be at around 21,400 to around 21,500. Highest open interest on the put side is 21,500 put. So that's why I say that level is very, very important. While resistance on the upside will be around the 21,950 to around 22,000 odd mark. The Nifty Bank that came to the party yesterday, in the near term, you know, the, it, uh, it conquered crucial support zone, uh, crucial resistance zones yesterday, which now becomes support. That's the 100 DMA as well as the 200 DMA. Important that the Nifty Bank continues to trade about those levels. For today, the second half of trade, the Nifty Financial Services Index will play out the weekly expiry. So that could do a bit of a swing factor. Let's see how this goes. Yesterday's session was very, very good, but the bulls will be looking for an encore. Back to you. All right, we're all going to wait by and see if that does come through. Nigel, thanks a lot for taking us through all of those cues. We are going to get into a short break now, but when we return, we're going to talk about ITC and Bajaj Finance. Both of those reported their third quarter numbers post-market hours yesterday. So all of the details in just a bit.
Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast, and let's talk about the big earnings which will be, uh, you know, really reacting today. So we have ITC, which actually missed both the revenue and margin estimate that the street was working with. So Mangalam is here with some of the details. Uh, Mangalam, this was a soft quarter, but it was expected to be soft, right? It was expected to be soft, but uh, the numbers that were reported were weaker than what the street was anticipating this time around. And why is that? Because of muted performance taking place in the cigarettes business. There was weakness in the agri and the paper business, which continued. But importantly, the FMCG business continued to do well, as did the hotels business. The net profit, that was aided by a tax credit and higher other income as well. So just to run you through the numbers, revenue was close to 16,500 crores. The street was working with a number of 17,000 crores. The EBITDA came in at 6,000 crores, a little over that. The street was working with a number of 6,400 crores. So both were a miss. The net profit, like I said, were aided by other income as well as a tax credit of nearly 500 odd crores itself. What was good in the numbers this time around? It was the FMCG business. Revenues grew at around 7.5%. The EBIT out there grew by 24%, marking the third straight quarter of 8.3% margins in the FMCG business. Hotels, we've been talking about how that business is doing well. So 18% revenue growth, 57% growth in the EBITDA. But Agri as well as Paper, both of them saw revenue declines and a bigger decline in the EBIT for the Paper business. Now, the cigarette volumes, that actually declined or rather, you know, was flat to a decline of about 2% in that range as against expectations of 0 to 2% growth. And the reason why that happened is because, one, the base quarter had 15% volume growth, so you're going in with a strong base. Secondly, this is a vote on account that we're seeing. Usually, ahead of budget, we see dealers stock up on cigarettes because they anticipate some sort of duty change, but because there's a vote on account, they're not doing that. And the third part is that mass consumption is struggling. Premium end is doing a lot better. And premium end does not account as much for volumes as it does for value. So those are a couple of factors. For starters, expect the stock to open in the red today. Okay, Mangalam, thanks a lot for laying out all of those, uh, you know, big uh, highlights from the ITC's earnings. But the other one that came post-market close is Bajaj Finance. And the company reported, uh, you know, AUM growth of around 35% and profit also grew quite well. So Abhishek is here with the details. Uh, Abhishek looks quite good. Well, it looks uh, good uh, in terms of uh, the performance on bottom line, but top line is slightly on the weaker side given the fee impact is also over there, uh, which was expected to be strong. So, a uh, mixed set of numbers with respect to top line uh, being uh, on the weaker side, however, uh, bottom line being higher than our poll. Uh, the PL momentum and our growth was about 29.25% YOY and about 6.5% sequentially. Operating profit growth was strong, 84% YOY and about 5.3% sequentially. Uh, provisions that increased by 16% quarter on quarter. Uh, so the PAT grew by 22.5% YOY and about 2.5% sequentially. Asset quality, both the gross NP ratio and the net NP ratio are stable on a sequential basis. Uh, calculation shows that the net interest margin has declined both YOY and quarter on quarter. It was expected to be up on a sequential basis, but there is pressure with respect to net interest margin. ROA has declined below the 5% level uh, for the first time in many quarters and ROE is at uh, 22%. Person. Key highlight is that in the con call, Rajiv Jain did say a lot of noise about him uh, on an ongoing basis. So he'll continue to be actively involved in shaping the strategy of the company and its subsidiaries. Back to you. All right, Abhishek, thanks a lot for taking us through all of those details on Bajaj Finance's earnings. We do need to get into a break now, but on the other side, we're going to shift focus to the commodity space and bring you a quick wrap of what's really going on there. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. So things are definitely turning a little bit for Asia. The Nikkei markets, which when we opened uh, the show, which were holding up with an over 100 point kind of gain, have pulled back over 60 points right now. So that market has definitely seen a bit of a dip. Hong Kong has also slipped further. So now it's down almost 2% in the Hong Kong markets. 300 points gone over there. And you have the Taiwanese index as well, which has moved into the red. It was holding in the green till a few minutes ago. Uh, what's also seeing some red, you have the Shanghai markets which are under pressure as well. Not too much of a cut, but you are seeing some red as well. So the only markets that are really managing to see some minor green in Asia right now are the Kospi markets, just around 13 points higher there, and the Straits as well. 
which is seeing around a 10 point kind of move so uh, there is definitely a little bit of a pullback that's coming through in the asian markets but that's not really uh, you know impacting what's going on on the gift nifty at all so if you look at the implied open for our own markets that looks very solid but still 106 points in the green right now and this after that solid solid session that we had yesterday 385 points higher as where we ended yesterday and it was a broad based rally that we saw so banks uh, all of the key sectoral indices actually seeing good moves yesterday so let's see we're definitely going to start in the green but let's see if we hold on to those uh, gains or not with that we're going to wind down on this edition of power breakfast thank you all for tuning in we're bazaar morning call up into